Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 1 of Bucket Coding Remastered. If you're looking to learn how to code using the Bucket API to make plugins for your Minecraft server, stay right here because this is where you need to be. If you're a longtime subscriber who might be a little bit confused, this video and this series is essentially a remaster of the series that I did two years ago, that I started two years ago, the original Bucket Coding series. I'm remastering it because I want to have higher quality videos and all of the latest information. So if you already know how to program with Bucket and you already know how to make Bucket plugins, then these videos are not for you. But if you're looking to learn, then stay right here. Before you watch these videos, make sure that you're comfortable with the Java API, the Java programming language. If you're not, I do have videos on Java. I would definitely watch them first. I know that you want to jump right in and start programming for Minecraft, but you need to know Java first because I'm going to assume that you know it, and if you just sit here and copy and paste what I'm writing, you won't understand what I'm doing and you won't be able to customize it for yourself. So make sure that you know how Java works before you start here. In this first episode, we're going to set everything up. We're not going to write any code at all, but we need to set up two things. The first is going to be the server itself, and the second is going to be the program that we're going to use to write all of our code in all of the future episodes. So the first thing that we have to do is download a bunch of files. But before we do that, I need you to make a folder somewhere. I'm going to do it on my desktop. You can do it wherever you want. And I'm going to call the folder bucket. You can call it bucket or bucket server or whatever you want to call it. Um, just make sure that it doesn't have spaces. It's not a big deal, but it makes it a lot easier when you don't have any spaces anywhere. So um, I would definitely recommend it. So there's our bucket folder. And if we look inside, you'll see that it's empty. But we are going to fill this up with some different files. So go to your favorite browser. I'm going to open up Safari here and go ahead and go to getspigot.org. This website hosts the latest builds of Spigot and Craft Bucket, which is really nice because it takes a really long time and a lot of commands in order to set it up yourself. You have to uh, basically download a ton of stuff and compile your own version, and it takes a very long time. But here, all you have to do is click on Get Craft Bucket 1.8, and it'll immediately begin downloading. So this link and all other links will be in the description below, um, but it's getspigot.org, and you can grab the latest version of Craft Bucket or Spigot. We're going to use Craft Bucket for this series. Spigot will also work, so it doesn't make a huge difference. The next step that just finished is we need to download a program called Eclipse. Now, if you've programmed in Java before, which I hope you have, you've probably used Eclipse. You might have used another program like IntelliJ IDEA or BlueJ or any of these various programs, um, but we're going to use Eclipse for this series. You can use whatever program, they're called IDEs, Integrated Development Environment. It's just a program that uh, helps you write code. It has a lot of cool features in it. You can use whichever one you want, but if you want to follow along, I would definitely use Eclipse. So we're going to go to eclipse.org, and then we're going to go ahead and go to download, and we want to grab the latest version of Eclipse. We want to choose the Eclipse IDE for Java developers, not the Java EE version. We don't need that. Choose your uh, operating system. It should work automatically, but you can always download for other versions, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. So then you'll choose it, and you'll go ahead and click the download button right there, and you'll see that uh, Eclipse will begin to download. The last thing that we need to get ready is we need to go to bucket.org, this is the official bucket website. And then you want to go to get craft bucket. And this is going to tell us how to set up a server startup script. So we're going to come back to this in just a second. Go ahead and go to your downloads folder and take the craft bucket underscore server dot jar and stick it inside of your bucket folder. If we open up the photo folder, we'll see that that is the only thing that we have now. We need to set up a script to start up our server. So we just double click on the script and then the craft bucket server will start up. You can't just double click on craft bucket. It won't work the way that you want it to. You want to be able to see the console and everything. So we need to start it through the terminal. 
So when you get to this page, which will of course be in the description, you want to look here and choose the correct operating system, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X. I'm obviously running Mac OS X, so I'm going to follow these instructions. I'm going to show you how to do it on this video, but if you're using Windows or Linux, it'll tell you exactly how to do it for those operating systems. Hopefully you already have Java installed, otherwise you will need to install Java. Um, we just obtained the server files, that was the uh, craft bucket underscore server dot jar um, and now we need to get the startup script all you have to do is copy the script which will be different based on your operating system then you want to go ahead and open up the program text edit or notepad or whatever you have on your computer if you're using text edit do command shift T to go into plain text mode with no formatting and just paste it in one important thing to note if we quickly bring this up, you'll see here that it's referring to uh, craftbucket.jar, but right here it's called craftbucket underscore server. So you need to rename one of the two. I'm just going to rename this to be craftbucket.jar, but make sure that they both have the same name or else you're going to get an error. Once you have this finished, you want to go ahead and save it. And we're going to call this start underscore server dot command. Make sure that you put it in the correct place. You want it to be inside of this bucket folder, right where you see craftbucket.jar is where this belongs. Where it says, if no extension is provided, use t.txt. Let's uncheck that and then hit save. We can quit out of text edit and we'll see, if I go back, that we now have this start underscore server and it says shell. It's an actual command instead of just a plain text file. There's one last thing that we need to do that is mentioned in the uh, in the guide back there. And we need to go ahead and open up terminal, which is an applications utilities terminal. And you need to type chmod a plus x and then space and drag that start server command in. Hit enter. That will basically allow the command to be run. It's going to modify the file so that it's an executable file instead of just a text file. Now we can go ahead and double click on start server and close out of the other window. You'll see that the server is starting up and it says here loading libraries please wait. The first time the server runs it will be a little bit slow so keep that in mind. You'll notice here that the server just stopped. It says you need to agree to the EULA, the end user license agreement, in order to run the server. Go to EULA.txt for more info. There's our EULA file. We're going to open it up and it's just going to tell us that we want to read the Minecraft end user license agreement and then after we've done so to set EULA equal to true. Make sure that you change it and save and then you can close out of it, close out of this window and try starting the server again. If the EULA file is ever deleted, then your server will not start until you modify it so that it says EULA equals true again, so keep that in mind. The server is now starting up for the first time, and if you see these scary looking stack traces or errors here, it's just because there are a bunch of files missing, a bunch of files, and it's just going to make the empty files, like your whitelist and your operators, it just needs to make those files as empty files. Okay. Now the server has started up, so let's actually try connecting to it. I'm going to open up Minecraft here, I'm going to open up the launcher, and we're going to join the server. It's important to remember that this server can only be accessed by you. It cannot be accessed by anyone outside of this particular computer. If you were to set up port forwarding and all of that stuff, then you could have other people access it. But you, we're just going to use this for testing our plugins to make sure that they work without errors. And then you can deploy them to an actual server if you have one. Now, let's just get rid of that. So you'll go to your multiplayer view, and you might have other servers in here, but mine's empty. And we're going to add a server. The server address is going to be localhost. Localhost is a server, it refers to your local computer. So again, you, if you type localhost, if one of your friends or another person types localhost, it'll be referring to their computer and not yours. So this only works for you. Um, we'll just name the server to be localhost. You can name it test server or debug server or whatever you want. And you'll see that it actually is running. It says it's a Minecraft server, so it clearly detected the server running. We'll go ahead and log into the server, and you'll see uh, right here that it does recognize that I just logged in. And indeed, I am inside of a Minecraft world on this server. 
One important thing to note is if we run slash help, you'll see that rather than the green Mojang uh, vanilla tech uh, help page, that it actually has this bucket help page. And you can see it says bucket right there. So we can tell that bucket is installed and that we're not just running a vanilla Minecraft server, but we're running a bucket server. And uh, if you run slash version, spell it correctly, um, oops, then it will tell you the server is running craft bucket for Minecraft 1.8.8. So you can clearly see that we are running uh, craft bucket and not the vanilla server. So that means that this server is all set up. Uh, we don't need to do anything else in this episode, but when we get uh, plugins written, then we're going to install them on the server and then test them out. We can go ahead and disconnect and quit out of Minecraft, and then go ahead and type stop into your terminal. That'll run the stop command, which makes the server shut down. Once it finishes, you can go ahead and quit out of terminal, and you can just take a moment to look at all of the files that were created. You can see that it's all set up, but we don't need to do anything else here. So close out of the bucket page, uh, or the bucket folder, and then you can also close out of uh, your browser because we don't need to do anything else in there. The other thing that we downloaded was this, the Eclipse Mars, uh, or whatever version it is for you, and it's, an, it's a compressed archive, so double click on it and it'll go ahead and expand, which should take just a second, and then you'll see that it gives us the Eclipse application. So there is the application you'll want to go ahead and install this. On a Mac, you just drag it to the Applications folder. If you're running Windows, I guess you would put it in your program files or on your desktop. And Linux, I don't know, desktop or wherever you're going to put it. But you just want to have this somewhere where it's accessible. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open it. Normally, I would drag it into the Applications folder, um, but I actually already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. We'll go ahead and open up Eclipse here and you'll see that the splash screen loads up and then pretty quickly you should see this pop-up about a workspace uh, that you need to set. A workspace is just a folder that contains all the different projects that you do in Eclipse. You're never going to really look inside of this folder so we don't care where it is. You can kind of hide it away somewhere if you want as long as you can find it if you need it. Um, I'm just going to put the default is Documents Workspace, and that's just fine with me, so uh, I'll just go ahead and leave that. You can also check right here where it says Use this as a default and do not ask again. Otherwise, it'll keep giving you this pop-up every single time you open Eclipse, and you probably don't want to do that. So once your workspace is set and you're happy, you can move it if you want, but I'm not going to, and you have that box checked, go ahead and hit OK. Now, when Eclipse loads up, you'll probably see some sort of window with a couple of icons in it, and then up around here at the top right, you'll see a workspace button, and you can simply click on it, and it will take you to this view. You may also see other tabs over here on the right and on the bottom, and you can close out of all of them. The only one that we actually need open is the Package Explorer. Once you are up to this point, you are finished Eclipse is now set up, and so is your server. We can go ahead and quit out of Eclipse at this point. That's all that there is for this episode. We have Bucket set up, we have a working server, and we tested it. We also have Eclipse set up, so we can actually start writing plugins in the next episode. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you think so far, and if you like this video, click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some more Bucket. Bye for now.